Hello friends, I am back with another tutorial for Adventure Creator. Today we are doing movables. As an example here in For Evelyn, we have to get through this ruined door in Eden's Path Dungeon. There's a little note that might give some idea what you have to do here. Orbs are the key. And we have these orbs here, so we can move them. Just click and drag with your mouse and you have to move them to these places for them here. And once you do that, the door opens. So how did I do this? There are two tracks in here, track one and track two. You can add the tracks and the draggables from the scene prefabs. They're under movable right here. There are tracks, draggables. These are what you need. Um, pickups are for 3D and hinge tracks are hard. I haven't figured them out yet, but I think they're also maybe mostly for 3D because you can use them for doors and such. Anyway, we are just doing the simplest thing. Draggable and then straight track. So, you just give the track your settings, the length, the rotation type if any, movement input, and stuff like that. It's really simple. You only really need to know about the length of the uh, track. It doesn't really... you probably don't need rotation in a 2D game. Then we have our draggables here. It has a sphere collider because I think the draggables need actual like 3D colliders so they can calculate their position correctly. If you don't have this, uh, it will give an error in the console. It doesn't like prevent you from doing it, but I think you can safely disable them if you don't want them. They just have to be there. Just remember, if you decide to disable the sphere collider, the object has to have some sort of collider, so it will work. For example, if you're using a mesh collider or box collider that is in the shape of your actual object, you might want to disable the sphere collider. But you always have to have a collider for this to work. Okay, so in the trackable options, you want to stick your trackable to a track. There's also an option to rotate or move along a plane, but I haven't really used those. You can select your track direction, if there is no restriction, forward only or backward only. As you can see, we also have a rigid body that's meant for 3D world, but it doesn't matter here, this works still perfectly. There are a lot of different settings for the draggables, but these are the most basic ones that we need right now. And then, on the interaction let go, we have an action list that checks the position on the track, where the, where the orb is on the track, and then if it's on the correct tracks, we will play another action list that actually opens the door. Okay, let's do this step by step. I think there's a light that's on in this scene, is there? Did I ever add an... Uh, yeah, I didn't add a light. Let's see. There's a global light here. Let's turn that down a little bit. And then we will add our own 2D light here, point light, for the light itself. Let's change its tone to a more blue color to reflect the light. Move the radius up a bit. And this will work just fine for our light right now. So by default, the light is on. Okay. So if we want to add a switch for the light, we want to have a sprite for it. Let's see, which layer, let's go for minus one for now. And then we have a separate object for the handle here. And that, that there, I want to use the snap so they're lined up correctly. Yeah, close enough for now. Okay, then we want to add the draggable script to your draggable object. You can do it like this or add a new one here and modify it. So, we also need a track for that. I'm going to add the track from the prefab movable. Here we have our straight track. Let's move it to its position, like so. 
then change the length to what you need so it's around there it's a very short track for now for me but this is what we're going with just change the name here so i remember okay then you can select the track you can stick to for best results ensure the first collider on this game object is a sphere collider covering the breadth of the mesh it can be disabled if necessary, but will be used to set correct limit boundaries. Yes. So we need to add a sphere collider. Just for that reason. So. I think. So I think that's good. Breath of the mesh. I'm not entirely sure what it means exactly, but I think when we have this like size and the track is going on this axis so this should work but we want to disable that and add an so because we are using the sphere collider here we need to if it's if it's on the same game object you have to use 3d colliders but it doesn't matter your cursor will detect it is just the same so as it turns out you shouldn't have negative values for the length so if you need to rotate it have a positive value and then just rotate the object so your track goes in correct ways now this should work quite well i might want to have to add more like movement so we can actually move this draggable object like quicker because it's just a switch. I'm not sure how much these values affect. Player motion influence. The influence that player movement has on the track force. Invert input. Don't release. It works better if we have off, off screen release and not do not release. Then we just always have the track even if we kind of move away from the object. That's what I prefer anyway. Okay, you might want to adjust the values so the object moves like smoother for you. But this is for an example, so it should be fine. Okay, interaction on let go. Let's do that. Action list. Then we go on movable. Check track position. Select or draggable object. Select or track. It's optional, but let's just do that anyway. And if the position value is equal to position 1 with an error margin of 0 0.05, I think that's quite fine. What we want to do now is to ensure the track position is precisely in 1. Let's do that. And then after that's done, we might just teleport our light object away from the scene and it's it's this point right here go to off no off screen there you go i just added this sound here that should do it okay and i think i can just copy everything of this apart here paste it here and check the condition is not met drag this to here so let's set this to zero and then set the track position to zero. Return the point light to this position. So we need to add a marker. And we can play the same switch sound. We want to add a variable. Let's make a local one light on. By initial value it's on, so it's true. We will set our local variable light on to false. And in here we will set it to true back again. It's better to keep this separate and then just add a variable check at the front. And check local variable. If light is on, then we will drag this to here if it's on we do the turn light off thing and if it's not on we can do this thing okay we can auto arrange and it's nice and neat 
Now that should work. You drag this up, nothing happens. Drag this down. The light goes out. We can drag this back up again. And the light returns. If we release it in the middle, it will just stay there. I could add another like action list thing that if we release it and it's nowhere, we will return it to whichever the actual value was. Because this is not like a good way to like just let it be there. But this is one of the ways which you which could help you make it's it's the error margin should be bigger. That's why it's not going out properly when I drag it down. But yeah. Uh, this is one of the ways you could use to make some interesting puzzles. Like for example in my upcoming game, Aragon's Tale here, we have this magical painting thing. We can move the parts on this painting, which will then move the actual parts of the map to another place. So the, now we can actually access this upper area of the map. And then we, if we do it again, it will move to the other position and we can access that part of the map. This is like a small part of uh, what might be nice to have in your game. Because these add uh, more like to the gameplay and stuff like that. I think we could do the same thing when we have the gas here. I believe you could be able to do the similar thing but with just a curved track. And then you had to pull this valve like by hand so this uh, gas goes off completely. But that's a very basic thing to do. These are mostly optimized for 3D because you know there's the actual like 3D world uh, sphere colliders and stuff like that. If you look at our draggable for instance in 3D mode you can actually see that we have colliders for 3D world. But it doesn't matter, it seems to work just fine for 2D. You just have more options in 3D to use those. And for example, the pickups. They're just gonna fall through the ground. I mean, you could like fiddle around with gravity and stuff like that, make them stick to the correct like uh, value on a single axis so it doesn't fall on the ground. And you could maybe handle movables here. But hey, now that you're here, follow Kisuart's Steam page. My Light in the Dark and Arkham Break are free. There's a free demo for Forever Luna and Aragon Style. The upcoming game is going to be free also. You can also follow me on Twitter. You could also follow me on Instagram. And I also have a TikTok. Yeah. So that's all I have. Go check it out.